So, on to the tutorial itself, <laughs> and for me whining. I promised to show you some of the uh, sensors and actuators, and maybe some controllers, and describe really what they do. So, the first one to start off with, although it's not in the alphabetical order, is always. Because this is really the base one. When you use Python scripting, quite often you're going to want some sort of update method. The one we talked before in the previous tutorial. So we use, generally, we use always. Always, as the name implies, is, well, we say that, um... I should really start by explaining how sensors work. Sensors have two different states, true and false. When they're true, the line carries on. So in this case, it would go from always to and to motion. When they're false, it doesn't, unless the controller allows that. That's, that's how, this is how the and or ors work. It's Boolean algebra, basically, or Boolean logic. So if I have two always, and I find invert this, so that instead of being true all the time, it's false all the time, and I connect it to the and, nothing will happen, because that one's uh, true, and that one's false, and of course when you apply true and false to an and, the overall is false. That's one times zero equals zero if you want it in algebra. Okay. And of course, these, this panel at the bottom with uh, level triggering, triggering frequency, and things like this, this is to um, affect how often uh, the sensors are checked, as it were. Um, true level, this, this pulse thing is it, it basically while it's true, it pulses. So it's basically while it's true, it doesn't just happen once. So it's as if, if you hold down the, this isn't really true, but if you hold down the space bar, okay, then the keyboard sensor with a space bar um, key will report true. Now, if it, if it wasn't pulsing, then it would only report that the key was pressed down, not that it was held. With pulsing, if it goes true, then it, it pulse. Uh, it, it basically pulses true or false every frame. So it's like it, the sensor is hit every frame. And you can actually change the frequency of it. So how many frames, really? It says in logic ticks, but that's what it really means. Um, so I can do every five frames or something. It will update like that. But we don't really need that turned on because it's always anyway. But sometimes, if you know, you're pressing the space bar and it only moves like once, and nothing's happening, you need to turn on true level uh, the the uh, pulse here, true level triggering. Obviously, we've got level here is uh, not particularly important, um, but well, it, it's kind of, but it's not. It, I, I won't explain it in this tutorial. And tap is actually pretty uh, useful. It's exactly the opposite to uh, pulsing, so it only happens once, even if it remains true, and that's pretty useful for uh, when you start up a when you start up a scene. You know, you don't want to keep set constantly setting a property or something like that. And finally, I have invert, which of course just inverts the true to the false and the false to the true. All right, that over and done with. I know I'm rushing. Um, Always is really, really useful, and in this case, what's going to happen is every frame or so, it's going to move along the y-axis by 0.3 locally. We're going to see this in action, hit P to play, and there we go. Alright, moving on to the next one, is actuator. Now, I'm using always as an example here of raising an actuator. So always and motion so it's the cube is going to move along the y now the actuator sensor uh, is true when an actuator a specified actuator is called so when motion happens then this becomes true and it becomes invisible so you should be able to see maybe for a frame or two it moving but then it'll actually just disappear 
There we go. So it's gone. And just to proof that, if I get rid of this and here, it moves along fine. All right. The next one is collision. Pretty useful. Um, first thing down here to notice is property. We'll come back to properties very soon. And it's basically a way of filtering which objects to check for collision. Now, it's worth noting also that the going back to the different I think I included this in the previous tutorial. Um, if we swap the engine to blend a game and go down to the physics tab here, we need to make sure that the object is the plane here. The object that has the collision sensor on must be dynamic. Okay, so under physics, physics type, dynamic. It doesn't have to be actor, that's only for near and radar, but it has to be dynamic, otherwise, it'll just pass straight through. So we can see this in action. Uh, so if it collides with something, in this case it's going to be the plane, then it will start a motion. The reason we've got this extended motion is because it's a dynamic object. It'll start a motion um, up, upwards one in the z-axis every time it collides with this plane. And because we've got gravity on, it's going to create a sort of bounce effect. Like that. So that's pretty useful. Next we have delay. And this is basically um, always, but with a delay on it. So first of all, we have the delay itself. So it will remain false until um, how many uh, until a certain point specified by the delay value here, and then it'll become true. Now it'll either remain true indefinitely, or if you set a duration, it'll only remain. Uh, true for so long, specified by the duration value, and then stop. And if you check the repeat box, it'll just repeat this over and over again. We can see this in action. Again, I've got a motion hooked up here. It'll delay, then it'll move, then it'll delay, then it'll move, then it'll delay, then it'll move, like that. And if we turn the duration down to zero, then we see we get a delay, and it'll just keep on going like it was an always. On to the next one keyboard we've all seen key is spacebar uh, first modifier as I was saying before is all about the control control alt shift that sort of thing and it and it does clock whether it's the right or left version of the control um, and again it's motion so space does nothing alt space does nothing control space does nothing has to be control alt space Next we have message. Now this is really cool and can be very important in your games. Now what's going to happen is quite complicated so it might take a bit of time to explain it. First of all, we're going to have a look at this cube here. This has got a collision, um, a collision uh, sensor hooked up to it. It's using a property, again, come back to those, I think, yeah and it's got a message actuator. Now, um, you know, Windows programmers will know exactly, well, win native Windows programmers know exactly what messages are about and will hate them probably, uh, if they have any sense. But uh, Blender messages, basically, you're, it's like sending an email between two different objects. <laughs> Strange example, but sending an email between two different objects. So you specify the, the recipient, in this case I'm going to send a message to the monkey, and you give it a subject. And the monkey, if it's looking out for this message, and this is actually a sensor when it's receiving it, well, it looks out for this message and checks for the subject. Okay, so when this uh, cube broadcasts the show monkey message to monkey, Monkey will it is looking for it and will pick it up, and then it will change its visibility to visible. All right. Um, the other thing I've got done is I've hooked up the sphere to a keyboard sensor, and, and that's going to move uh, along minus uh, minus 0.5 on the x-axis locally, and the monkey spins, and as we can see here, uh, always hide. So it's actually 
change the visibility. And you'll notice because I've got so much going on here, I've actually named these properly. Uh, so I can collapse them and things and know what they mean. Um, the other thing is I've got tap um, activated here, so it's only going to happen once. Um, so this will only hide the monkey once and it'll leave it alone. So, if we pl play this scene... Okay, so we've got our ball, we've got our cue, the monkey's been hidden. I press space to move the ball. When the ball collides with that, the monkey appears and it's spinning. And that's because when it collided, this sent a message to the monkey so that it would uh, suddenly appear. So that's messages. Okay. Mouse, uh, well, it's... I would not suggest using mouse over or mouse over any without the cursor being shown. That's quite difficult. But in this case, I'm going to introduce a new actuator, and this is the edit object. Uh, I really should have said, previously we had the visibility um, actuator, and that's simple enough. You can choose whether it's visible, whether occlusion is um, applied, or whether it's supposed to hide it, uh, you know, whether it's supposed to um, hide or show its children as well. So, where were we? Yeah, so that's visibility. Mouse, we have an edit object actuated down here. Now, you've got to be careful with these because the object that you want to add has to be on another layer. Okay? So I've got mine on layer 2 and it's the sphere. Alright? Just, I, I'm not quite sure whether or not you need to, but I've under render settings, I've got it on, only on the first layer, but I don't think that makes a difference. So, mouse event I've got down as left button. You can have, this is a variety of ones you can choose. But I've got it sort of like shooting. And the velocity doesn't, the velocities don't seem to be working. I don't know if that's just me, whether I've got it wrong, because uh, I, you know, but, um, I don't know, the velocities don't <coughs> don't appear to be working. So, um, even though I've got it set to 1, it's just doing nothing. So I've got add object. The time, the object value, of, the object value of course, is the object to add, and of course that has to be on another layer. And the time is how long it's going to stay alive for, so how long it remains visible before it's deleted from the scene. So this is basically to stop your scene clogging up with all sorts of objects. You know, in a shooter game, if you're firing off a thousand bullets a second, you don't really want to keep those thousand bullets every second, because you'll really quickly clock up a whole load, and eventually the game will just start lagging. So, uh, most objects have a life, or a lifetime, or a lifespan, or whatever, um, and after so long, after this lifespan, they'll be deleted, and they won't be rendered anymore. So that's what this is, time. And... I don't know. I think that's in. I think that's in seconds. It's pretty weird. I'm not sure. Okay then. That, I'm just gonna run this. I, I gotta go into wireframe because of course it's gonna spawn right in the cube. I could press P uh, to start the game, and when I click, the sphere appears. If you don't want to have to place wireframe, here's a good tip. You can actually make the cube not rendered in the game engine. So if I, go, if I change the engine to Blender Game, go down to the um, Physics tab in, in the Properties, and click Invisible. Then when I play, you can't see anything, and you can only see the sphere. And of course the time is affecting how long it's being shown for. Okay, and it will add multiple objects, of course.